lots of financial economists essentially are, are testing hypotheses and, and, and testing theories. And that's essentially our starting point. That is, we, we look at a variety of different theories. It could come from academia. It could be hypotheses that, that, that we formulate, that, that somebody else has looked at. It could be some sort of client interaction or client input. And we look for, for sort of interesting things that, that affects the way security prices change over time. And when we're looking for sort of confirmation of those hypotheses, evidence consistent with it, evidence against that particular sort of hypothesis, once we get are comfortable with a particular tilt, that is, why are you getting compensated for holding overweights and underweights and in particular security, then we think about how to deploy that tilt in a, in a variety of asset classes. Could it be in long short, in long only? Could it be in different in, in equities, in commodities, in fixed income, and in, in a wide variety essentially, either within or across asset class? Uh, type of application. There's a variety of way of doing that. The, the primary way is to look at historical data and especially to look at out of sample data. Lots of the things that we will look at will be either be studying in academia or there will be sort of a, a single paper or somebody would have looked at it in the past. So the very important thing is to go out of sample, look at different asset classes, look at a sample that was not using the original study, either a time period that was prior to that or a time period that was subsequent to that. The second component is to look for non-price related type of evidence. Say I have an hypothesis that some type of investor holds some overweight and that generates a pricing effect that allows me to build a portfolio. If I can get data on those investors' holdings, for example, I can directly test that hypothesis and look at who is actually holding those securities and, and how those holdings changes over time. The third type of evidence can come from essentially natural experiments. It could be generated, so suppose we are we're testing an hypothesis about some uh, trading uh, related effect or something that can affect the way we trade. You could generate data by running an experiment in which you randomize uh, some trades done in some way, some trades died in some other ways, or you exploit some other type of natural experiment and changes in regulation that can affect the way securities are, are, are traded or changes in, uh, changes in taxes or changes in, in treatment of a particular sort of accounting out there. That could be another example. Behavioral finance, it's a, it's a big part of, of, of what we do on a, on a day to day. So again, we're looking at model testing hypothesis. So we require somebody to take the other side and, and in many cases we have behavioral based explanation. We also have risk-based explanation, and, and more often than not, both explanations can be true at the same time, and, and reality is probably sort of a, a blend of a combination, uh, a combination of, of both. Uh, behavioral finance helps you, again, think about it. Why would some investors have portfolios that are not optimal? Why would they really to accept lower uh, returns, and why would they not diversify? Why would they? Uh, underreact to, to corporate news announcement? Why would they overreact to long-term string of, of earnings news and, and good news generating the, the value effect, for example? The, it helps you think about investors that are not holding optimal portfolios. In the industry, there's a big dispersion in, in, in terms of how often people revise their model or whether or not people time their factors is change the exposure to a given uh, factor. We as sort of academically minded and sort of as financial economists, we have a very, very high bar for removing something or for making small tweaks. Uh, what I usually say is it takes about 30 years worth of evidence to think about something that you would like to put in your models. And it's going to take about 30 years worth of evidence to, to take it out of the model. So it, it, the amount of noise in financial market, it's, it's very, very large, and it's, it's very dangerous to essentially take something out just because it had a negative realization or a negative returns over, over the short term. So we as a firm tend to be very conservative in, in the way we uh, change our, our models and change our portfolio exposure because we based our research on long-term evidence. We don't look at things over the past few months. We want to see 30 years of evidence, 50 years of evidence, many, many asset classes, and therefore that generates a very, very high bar sort of to tweak. 